Good morning, YouTube. It's about 6 a.m. in Scottsdale. We're gonna be doing a review video today on my Jeep Wrangler. But before we go back to the warehouse and start talking about all the good things I like about it, I thought I would show you first. Awesome way to start a Monday morning out in the desert off-roading but we are back at the lifted warehouse now and if you guys have not seen the full review video we did on the RS7 we will put that link at the end of this video so you can watch that but today we are going to focus on the Jeep I'm gonna walk you guys around and talk about some of the custom upgrades we've done to it and I'm also gonna talk about a few of the things that have frustrated me about this Jeep all right starting at the front of the Jeep I'm sure you've already seen that pretty much Everything is paint matched or black. I wanted that murdered out look for this vehicle. I think it looks really clean that way. Uh, some of the customs we've done up here, we did the, I think it's called Angry Bird Grill, has that V shape like that, makes it have more of aggressive stance from the front. We also did this custom hood. That's actually visually one of my favorite parts about the Jeep is the hood itself. I think that it just, it makes it look a lot more aggressive and it stands out more than just a typical Jeep. Uh, we did a smitty built winch here in front and then we have the steel bumpers in the front and the back which you'll see in a minute you can already see the tires from the front but we'll go into more detail on those when we get to the side moving from the front to the side uh, one thing i want to say is that i did used to have a custom light bar on here but it just made so much noise on the freeway and even on side streets doing like 45 miles an hour it was just so loud and annoying that i took it off it was a really cool feature when you go off-roading, but I didn't go off-roading that much in the dark where I needed it. So it was more annoying than it was beneficial, so I ended up taking that off. I still have it, but it's just, like I said, it was, it was a huge pain in the ass. Um, you'll see on the side here, we have the drop-down steps. Um, these are made by Amp. They have been really, really useful when like someone like my wife or a shorter person is getting in and out of here makes it a lot easier for them to get in. You can start to see some of the custom interior we've done, but I'll go over that after the outside. Fenders I have on here are paint matched as well. Now I will say this, for having 37 inch tires, if you're a Jeep enthusiast, you're already watching this, you're like, why do you have those fenders? Honestly, it's because um, I was going to replace them and either do a fender eliminator kit or doing some aluminum flare fenders. But now that I'm going to end up selling the vehicle and I haven't been taking it off-roading as much, that I'm just leaving them on there and the next guy will probably do that first thing when they get it. The wheels are, like I said earlier, the tires are 37 inches, 20 inch wheels, these XD series wheels. I've been really happy with how these performed. One, yeah, I think they look great. I think they really pulled the vehicle together when we put these on. There was actually a different, cause this was already built out when I bought it and they had a different set of wheels on there, but aesthetically I thought these looked a lot better. And I mean, I've taken these off big drop offs in Sedona where all the, the red rock cliffs are, taking it off roading in, in um, uh, Flagstaff, just I've pretty much put these to any different kind of test in the snow, mud, and these tires and the wheels, everything has just performed really well. I've been really happy with them. Between the Fox shocks, the TerraFlex system, the lift we put on here, and these tires and wheels, it's pretty much ready to go over anything. But like I said earlier, I would switch out these fenders just because you don't have a lot of clearance in here. I would either do a fender eliminator kit or some aluminum flare fenders instead. The back you see I didn't do any custom tail lights or black them out or anything there are a few sets of custom tail lights that I think are that look really clean one of my buddies actually put them on his I don't really like when they're all blacked out I don't that's not my style um, I, like, I think there's like a fine line there between it looking clean and looking cheap so I actually just didn't do anything with it at all on these I've done it on some of my other vehicles but it just has to be done exactly right obviously I have the matching uh, fifth wheel back here keep everything flowing from the rest of the vehicle. We have the 
custom steel bumper on the back with the trailer attachment and hitch ready to go. It's already set up. In the back, really basic, other than just putting in the extra sub in there. Uh, that thing bumps really hard. And then we have a uh, adjustment dial up in the front so you can turn it up and down so it's not overbearing when you don't want it to be. Rubber mats in the back, keep the rugs nice and clean underneath for the next person. But it's just nice. I have rubber mats through all of this. What I love about this car is that I can throw stuff in here, take it pretty much anywhere. I don't have to worry about it. It is really nice about having this car. I just wanna say one thing. I'm sure you've probably already noticed that on the outside of the vehicle, there's a bunch of scratches and places like this that are damaged. And honestly, it's because I use the car. I take it off-roading. I, you know, I'll ramp this thing through the desert, take it to Sedona, take it down past, all that kind of stuff. And it's not to rag on anybody else, but it's very popular in Scottsdale, the city I live in, to buy Jeeps like this, put all this off-road equipment into them and upgrades, and then they, ne they never see anything but pavement. And that's just not the case with my vehicle. I've ran the hell out of this thing. I even remember the first time I took it off road, I was in Sedona, I was going down a trail and I could hear the branches and the brush on the sides of the trail that were scratching the car. And it first started to bother me. Then I thought to myself, I was like, I didn't buy this car to keep it in showroom pristine shape. I bought this car to use it, to have fun with it, to take it off road. And ever since that moment, I just have never let that bother me. So. I use this thing for what it's made for. I take it out and have a great time with it. And I've, I've enjoyed every time going off road and not worrying about every little scratch and ding in it. So to be honest, this thing stays dirty pretty much year round. It's never super, super clean. Uh, this isn't a car that I baby and take to the car wash and hand wash all the time, which I will say one thing that kind of does suck about having that big of tires. There's not very many car washes that'll let you run it through the automated wash. So a lot of them will try to make you get a hand wash. I did find one though, that'll let me run it through it. And it's like six bucks. So that's where I take it all the time. But let's move on to the inside of the car and I'll show you what we've done in there. Now that we're inside the car, I'll go over some of the custom work we did on the interior. We didn't do as much in here. We did the seats, which are these leather diamond stitch seats. These look really clean. I think that it gave it a little bit more of an upscale feel look when you open the door and you can actually see it through the windshield when it's parked you can see the piping on the seats and that looks really nice, I think. Um, we did a custom head unit. Jeep does make stock um, systems now that are really good and they're new ones. But if you're looking at getting a Jeep and you're watching this video and you're wanting a lot of custom work done to it, something to consider and what we did is we actually bought a Sport which doesn't have a lot of the bells and whistles that like a Rubicon or even a Sahara would have. And then we added the customs we want to it. So it can actually be more cost effective to buy a, a model that has less stuff on it and put the things you want on it than to buy a higher end model, tear that stuff off that you just paid more money for anyways, and then add your own. That doesn't make as much sense in my opinion. Uh, you'll see that there's some of the black accent matches through here to match the rest of the style of the car. We went blacked out on everything. We had to change the gear ratio to a lower gear ratio because of having the 37 inch tires. I believe we have it at four, five, six. Um, I already can read the comments down below right now. People are speculating on which gear ratio it should be at. That's what's worked well for us. Um, this right here is just real simple how you switch from two wheel drive to all wheel drive or four wheel drive. It's very easy and convenient to do. Like earlier this morning when we were driving on the trail, you can just stop, throw it into four wheel drive when you need it and take it right back off when you don't. Super simple how they did that. There's not a whole lot of bells and whistles and fancy stuff to go over inside this vehicle. That's not really what it's meant to be, which is kind of what's unique and beautiful about it is that it's not super fancy and has all the stuff that something like the Audi RS7 would have in it. It's the stuff that you need. It's comfortable. It looks nice. It looks rugged. It looks clean. I have the iPhone iPod hookup for the head unit here. And that's a little bit different. This is a custom head unit, but pretty much anyone you get now is compatible with that. Uh, like I said, we have the dial up here for the sub. You can do it through the head unit, but it's just a lot quicker and easier to do it with the dial. Uh, just like any other Wrangler, the roof is completely removable. We don't take it off that much here. It's really dusty here and just destroys the interior. So I haven't done it as much here, but um, it is cool when you take it off and it just has that open airy feeling, which a lot of people buy Wranglers for that reason. And I get that that is a cool, cool feature to have. But other than that, like I said, we didn't do a whole lot on the inside here. I just wanted to make it look nice and comfortable, but still remain rugged. 
and you're already saying there's nothing rugged about diamond stitched leather seats and i completely agree with you they're a little extra but they look nice so let's move back to the outside of the car we haven't really done any performance upgrades other than i wouldn't even really consider it an upgrade just changing the gear ratio to handle the tires and doing better off-road uh so it's still the standard v6 haven't done an intake or anything like that something that i would consider doing is putting a different intake on it i have a buddy who dropped a hemi into it which i think is pretty badass but for me, I'm not taking this thing racing. I don't think it makes much sense to spend the extra money to for that. It is a cool thing to have, and if you have the money to do it and not worry about it, then yeah, I don't blame you. I'll put those clips in back. They take a little bit fa longer to put back in as they do to take out. Something that I had an issue with was the headlights flickering. And we also had another crazy issue of my windshield wipers turning on and all the lights on my dash flashing and it saying no bus. Now I took it into the dealer probably three, four, five times and they never could figure it out. I took it to a custom um, radio shop where they did the head unit. They looked through all the wiring, couldn't figure anything out. So what I ended up doing is I was doing a bunch of research myself and I started reading uh, where a lot of people were having issues with, because we had aftermarket um, headlights in there, they're the halogens. And they were saying that that was causing the, the, the headlights to flicker and also some other issues with shortages, like saying no bus every once in a while. So I said, okay, I have custom on mine. There's no way that these aren't somehow linked. And we had tried everything but that. So what I did is I went and I got stock headlights. I took the customs out. I know you can buy an adapter before everybody starts commenting that too. You can buy a little adapter so you can keep the aftermarkets. But I was just so tired of dealing with the issue and it being 115 degrees in Arizona and I'm sitting at a stoplight with my windshield wipers on for five minutes and everybody looking at me like I'm nuts. So I was like, I'm sick of this. I'm not dealing with this anymore. So I just took the stock headlights. I replaced it, put those back in, took the custom ones out and it fixed all the problems. So we haven't had any problems since then. So that was the fix for that. I don't know if, if you're watching this, if you had any, I, there's a lot of forums. People will be like, well, I unplugged them for, you know, whatever, 10 minutes, plugged them back in. And then the problem came back six months later. There's all kinds of different things people have said and tried. And so far, this is what worked for me. But um, overall, it's been an awesome vehicle. I would say the only issues that I've had, which I'll go over right now, for my frustrations with the vehicle, is stuff that's had to do with aftermarket parts. Um, you know, they always say Jeep stands for just empty every pocket. I guess I could agree with it to an extent, but only because we've put so much aftermarket parts onto it. The actual core vehicle, stock vehicle itself, really hasn't had any problems. We had one problem with the ABS, but again, that could have to do with the size of the tires. Um, there's most of the problems that we've had with a stock vehicle have probably been caused by, by aftermarket parts. So another thing that I'll show you if you wanna come around here, let's see if it works right now. Answer is no. When the door opens, the step's supposed to come down. When you close it, it's supposed to go up automatically. Uh, I've already taken it in and they said they couldn't really figure out what was causing it, why it's random. I mean, it'll literally work every single time for like three, four days straight and then just stop again. So if you know what causes that, comment down below because right now it looks like I'm just going to have to contact uh, Amp Research and see what the deal is on that and see if they can tell me what we need to do to get it fixed or I guess order a new one. But again, that's an aftermarket part. Um, so the combination of that and then I will be honest, the, the no bus thing with the windshield wipers, like it would be, we'd, I'd go through phases where it happened three, four times a day and I would take it into the Jeep dealership and they would say, this is an aftermarket problem and just try to like basically, sometimes they hold my Jeep for like a week and I'd have to figure out a different car at the time and then come back and they didn't fix it. And that just kept happening. And then just dealing with that over and over. And then there'd be the other random little things that started going on that, I got to a point as an owner, I was pretty frustrated. I was ready to dump this thing because I was just, it doesn't matter how cool a car looks or how nice it is if you can't rely on it. If it's having annoying issues, everybody's gonna get frustrated. And so I was going through that for a while, but now we pretty much got everything figured out and I'm enjoying owning it again. So I am selling this car and that's why it says final review. And now the only reason why I'm selling this car because honestly, I would buy this again. Um, if you're looking for a financial perspective, if you buy it right, meaning you don't go buy a showroom and then drop $30,000 in upgrades because you are going to lose money on that. 
but if you go buy one that's used and it's already been built and you can find a good deal, and in Arizona, buy it private party so you don't pay sales tax, you can get yourself in a very good position where you could actually drive and own this vehicle for a few years very inexpensively because they don't depreciate very hard. They do an awesome job of holding their value. So I would buy this car again, but the reason why I'm selling it is just for a tax break for this year. Uh, there's a way you can buy a vehicle and write it off. So I think I'm gonna end up getting a different truck for the warehouse. I'm looking at the new Raptor is probably the front runner right now. I did a poll on my Instagram. Now, if you don't follow my Instagram, go follow my Instagram. I'll put the link on the screen um, between this Jeep or the new Raptor. And actually this Jeep won probably, I'd say the vote was probably at least 90% for the Jeep. So that does say a lot about it because this car is probably worth half of what a new Raptor would cost. This is actually the first Jeep I've ever owned. And if you're watching this video, or you're just a big Jeep fan in general, you already know how tight knit and how supportive the Jeep community is. And I've actually really enjoyed being a part of that. You know, driving down the road and seeing somebody wave at you just because you drive the same car as them. Nobody's ever waving at me in my Audi. If anything, they're probably giving me the middle finger. <laughs> they're not waving and being nice. So that is something I wanna say, it has been really cool. Uh, being a part of the Jeep community and I've enjoyed that because it's a really supportive tight-knit community. Overall, I want to say that I give this car an excellent rating. I've really enjoyed having it. I've loved uh, taking it off-road. I've created a lot of awesome memories in the last three years that I've owned it and uh, I definitely would recommend one if you're looking at it. So I don't want this video to get too long. I want to wrap it here. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you're new to my channel, it's not just a car channel. We're actually in my warehouse right now. Lifted Lifestyle is a supplement brand I own. We have our own full gym over there. If you haven't already made some comment about me being a meathead, that's why I look like this because it is a sports nutrition brand and we do have a gym right there next to the Jeep. So uh, please subscribe to the channel. We're gonna be putting out more car review videos. I'm looking at a new supercar right now. I'm not gonna say what it is. I'm doing my research on it. I'm trying to find the right one and hopefully that video will be coming up soon. Thanks again for watching this video, and I hope one day your dream car is your real car. Take care.